I had multiple requests to talk about Robin Williams, and I was planning on feuding Goodwill Hunting with Dead Poet Society. After all, he won the Oscar, and they are fantastic films. However, that's not what I remember Robin Williams for. I grew up with Good Morning Vietnam, Aladdin, Mrs. Doubtfire, and the two I'm sharing today, Jumanji versus Hook. Let's go. In Jumanji, Williams is the star. He plays a lost explorer, Alan Parrish. A ironic name considering he, in fact, perished about 20 years ago, being trapped inside the board game Jumanji. Alan is somewhat standoffish at first, and a bit primitive, seeing as he hasn't been around another human for almost two decades. The supporting cast consists of two kids, Judy and Bradley Shepard. Kirsten Dunst takes a break from darker films like Interview with a Vampire to play a more normal child. I remember having a pretty big crush on her when that film came out. Calm down. I was like 13 at the time, so it's cool. Bonnie Hunt plays long-lost friend of Alan's, Sarah. She's been reeling over his loss ever since he was gone to the game. Comedic relief outside of Robin's character comes from the criminally underrated David Allen Greer as Allen's oldest friend Carl Bentley. This guy's been hilarious since In Living Color aired, although Blank Man was pretty f***ing terrible. Not his fault. Not his fault. Jumanji's main threat is the title game, but it brings with it an equally dangerous antagonist, Hunter Van Pelt. He's a sinister villain and a major threat every time he pops up. But nobody rocks the stash harder than Dustin Hoffman's hook. Transition. Robin Williams is of course great as Peter Pan as he brings that youthful spirit and joyous energy to every scene he's in. But Hoffman as Hook is just a blast to watch. His curiosity, his manipulation, his swagger are a few of the many reasons I continue to revisit this classic. The main reason, of course, being Rufio, Rufio, Rufio. That's what they do. And that's what I just did. And I look stupid doing it. Subscribe. Then there's the late Bob Hoskins as Smee. Maggie Smith as Granny Wendy, and all the wacky kids. Oh yeah, Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. She didn't do anything for me, and that's all I'm going to say about that. She's the female George Clooney. Jumanji's the story of a 12-year-old boy trying to finish a board game. Hell, I've had risk games that lasted longer. You don't see me making a movie about it. While Alan's been lost from the real world for 26 years, Peter's been lost in the real world for just as long. Look at me find similarities between these films. Hook is a clever spin on the story of Peter Pan, where we get to see a Peter that's lost that spirit of adventure and joy. His son Jack has been taken under Hook's... Well, Hook. It's a smart premise because it's a somewhat origin story that's not burdened with the mundane task of building up a character from scratch. Instead, the audience gets to relearn with Peter Pan some of his talents, such as flying, swashbuckling, and the most powerful tool of them all, Imagination. I still dream of that delicious meal from time to time that appears to be Play-Doh in different food shapes, sitting around the table with the lost boys, watching as our brave yet misguided leader Rufio fights for his place at the head of the team. And then Hook took him from me. He took my Rufio, my poor, sweet little Rufio. He was so young. He was so innocent. I mentioned that Jumanji is very simple in premise, but also brilliant in execution. I remember sitting in that theater as a wee little girl, clinging to my chair, eating my popcorn, excited to see what's going to happen next, what that board game is going to throw at us, what kind of crazy f***ing animal or monster or whatever. Whether it be a pack of monkeys, a vicious lion, a herd of elephants, or a colony of spiders, it's guaranteed to leave you smiling. It's a stampede! This is a nice round to talk about. Both movies have a unique style to them. Steven Spielberg really plays out the fantasy aspect of Hook with creative set pieces, wonderful sword fights, pirate ships, clock smashing, fairy dust sprinkling, plank walking, and fat kid bowling. Now I will say, this looks pretty small scale by today's standards. You can tell that Spielberg shot almost the entire film on a soundstage, as most of the scenes are very compact in nature. There are no large sweeping shots like you would see in new films. So big. Large shots. Ah. Jumanji's a very effects-driven film. I'm like, I'm like driving in a Jeep here, I guess. I don't know. 
And Joe Johnston, the director, was very wise to use a more stylistic approach to a CG. The computer generated animals like the monkeys are very simplistic in nature and style. They're almost cartoonish. Granted, I could be totally full of shit, and that was just the best I could do at the time, but I'd tell myself it was intentional. It has to be intentional. It's Ralph. Here we have some of the best in the business, with James Horner heading up Jumanji and John Williams tinkering around with Hook, like Tinkerbell. Although Horner does a good job composing 13 unique pieces, they can't hold a crock's tail to Williams' work. I miss the more fantastical melodies of the 90s films, that adventurous sound. Nowadays it's replaced with some form of like dubstep loud noises, just Optimus! Pop, pop, Optimus! That sound. But I've talked about this enough in the past. Let's wrap this up. Like I told my ex-girlfriend. I'm biased towards 90s films since I grew up experiencing them. Spielberg has gone on record stating that he was limited by what could be accomplished with Hook and thinks some of it worked while other portions did not. One thing is certain though, no matter how big the budget or how good the effects get, great actors can't be replaced. Robin Williams was one such actor. The classics like Mrs. Doubtfire and Good Morning Vietnam, his brilliant stand-up, all this compacted together is just what we know of Robin Williams, what he's opened up and shared with us on the big screen. Those things will never be replaced. They will be with me until I die. And unfortunately, he went too soon. Now, Mr. Williams, I'm not a religious person. I don't know what's out there for all of us after this life. I do know this, though. You embodied Peter Pan. The joy, the spirit, the emotion, the whimsy, the childlike wonder. And I know, no matter where you're at, you found your Neverland. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. That was tough to get through, not gonna lie. I don't even know him. <laughs>